Well, welcome to the Australian Automotive Aftermarket Expo for 2017 and we're here at the uh, Melbourne Convention and Exhibition Centre and it was, uh, the event was opened this morning by, uh, by Stuart Charity and Stuart is joining us here now and Stuart, the interesting thing from your presentation this morning was despite all of the talk about the, the doom and gloom, this is one of the biggest turnouts that you've ever had. Yeah, it is, and, and um, we really want, if there's, if there's one sort of key message that we want to get out uh, uh, about this show is that anyone that comes down here, um, we've got 438 exhibitors, five acres of floor space, uh, it's completely sold out, um, the exhibitors have just gone to the another, next level again in terms of the, the, the quality of their stands, the quality of the products, um, we've got record numbers of, of um, pre-registrations, and we're, so we're expecting uh, probably 12,000 trade visitors to come through. And quite frankly, we think this um, this sort of uh, talk about that you know, the industry's dead and it's you know, it's dying in October and whatever. We uh, we need to get past that. Um, you know, the, the car industry is leaving, and that's going to be devastating. But um, the whole of the automotive industry is not shutting down, and anyone walking through the show today will, wouldn't see that uh, this industry is dead by any stretch of the imagination. You had uh, the the minister, Cinder Arthur Cinderdinos, um, come through the this morning and open the uh, open the event. What uh, he had a walk around and and spoke to a lot of the exhibitors here. What was the message they were giving him, and what was the message that uh, you want him to take away from the show? Yeah, look, one of the things that we do is we really use this show to to, to leverage our relationships with members of parliament because um, it, it's it's pretty hard to encapsulate uh, when you're meeting them in Canberra or whatever uh, just what our industry is all about. And as soon as they walk through the door here, yeah, you know, they 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 get it. They see all the brand names. They see how big it is. Uh, the first three words he said when he walked in the hall was "Wow, wow, wow." He was looking both ways and. Uh, he couldn't believe it. And, um, I, I've got to say, uh, Arthur Sinodinus is, is, uh, is a friend of the Aftermarket uh, Association. He's, he's intervened on a couple of issues. He's recently taken over the, the industry portfolio. And um, uh, he, he really got to the crux of issues. He was, he was talking uh, to, to companies about um, uh, what's holding them back, what the, what the impediments are, and, and he was getting that feedback and he was taking it on board. So uh, we're, we're really hopeful that uh, as a result of that um, visit today, um, that we can start that dialogue about um, what the government can do to play a support role in, in, in growing uh, our, our manufacturing and export base. So from what people were saying to the, the Senator this morning, what are the impediments in ho holding them back at the moment? Yeah, well, it was interesting. Uh, you know, people often think, and again, this is a, a, a sort of a bit of uh, a myth about the, the automotive industry that you know, the whole industry's just you know, got their hand out wanting, wanting welfare and, and so on. The aftermarket's never been part of any of the, the subsidy programs that the, uh, the, the government was giving the, the car industry. We've, we've survived on our own two feet. Um, and a lot of the discussions were about things like um, uh, input costs, so power. You know, uh, South Australian manufacturers, Munro, the major sponsor of our uh, award, said their power costs have gone up 600% uh, in the last three years. Uh, and uh, they can't put up their, um, the, the price of their Australian-made shock absorbers and they're competing against imports. So um, skill shortages was a big one. So uh, actually getting you know, uh, good quality staff and engineering and, and, and research and development. Um, so at what level is that falling down, the, the, the skills area? Is it that we're teaching people the wrong skills or we just don't have a, enough people going into that industry? People perhaps don't find uh, getting into automotive engineering these as, as attractive as perhaps they used to in the 70s and, and 80s. Yeah, look, a lot of the real skills gaps are at, at the trade level. And in fact, it was Pettis Suspension that was talking about uh, skills gaps in, tr in terms of trying to get uh, the skilled people out into their, um, into their network. And um, there's no doubt that automotive has got a, an image problem. Um, uh, trade schools of the traditional trade schools have, have sort of moved away from those uh, those mainstay trades. A lot of parents are encouraging their kids to go to university, that sort of thing. Um, and the perception about the automotive industry is that it's you know sort of dirty and you know a grease monkey type work. Whereas the reality is that you know you, you, a technician opens the bonnet on a car now. They're they're, they're hooking up um, advanced diagnostic machines. They're they're actually diagnosing faults from the the passenger seat. Uh, with a laptop on, on, on their lap. So um, it's, it's quite high tech now and there are a lot of opportunities uh, in the industry. And we, 
uh, really need to get that message out to, to, um, to, to schools and career advisors and to TAFEs and because and, um, uh, the industry is, there's a lot of opportunities there and it's a great industry to work in. You mentioned, we've mentioned the success of this particular show. Now, normally, once every two years, the show for a long time was uh, rotating between Melbourne and Sydney. Yeah. Um, there's been some major changes up in Sydney to the, to the venue up there. A lot of us expected that in 2019 you'd be back in Sydney. Um, that's not happening. You're going to stay with this show here, but you've made an announcement today about another event which is coming up next to you in Sydney. Tell us about that. Yeah, that's right. So uh, we uh, this morning at the media launch, and we're, we're going to unveil it tonight at our dinner in front of uh, 850 people uh, all across our industry. Um, we just couldn't make this uh, this event fit into the new exhibition centre in Sydney. It's a it's a multi-level centre. It's it's probably more designed for conventions than exhibitions. Melbourne works. It's a great centre, it's got all the infrastructure around, so um, we're looking at keeping the, the show here um, and really focusing on, on bringing the people to the show. If you look at the major shows around the world, they don't move um, uh, their location. Uh, um, but we, we do know that Sydney and New South Wales is a very, very important market. It's the most populous state in Australia. Um, and we want to do some major activity in, in, in other states. So we've launched a, a, a convention, AutoCare 2018, um, it's going to be uh, basically the premier convention uh, for the automotive supply chain, uh, for repair workshops, and we really hope for collision repair workshops. Um, so what we're doing is uh, we're going to have um, education seminars focusing on those three different streams. Uh, we're going to have a custom car and display uh, on, on an outdoor uh, event deck. Uh, we're going to have celebrity guest appearances um, from motorsport and, uh, and uh, motoring identities. Um, and we're going to have a, a trade display, a smaller trade display in and around that and, and really create a, uh, a hub of activity over two days. Um, we think we can attract um, two, three, four thousand um, uh, industry professionals uh, to come into the exhibition centre, the new one in Darling Harbour in Sydney, and we think it'll be a great event. It's not another trade show. The focus will be on education. Um, and on really uh, educating the industry on what's going on, the changes, how they need to adapt their workshops and what tools and equipment they need and so on. Um, so we think that's the right event uh, for that market uh, and um, we'll be putting some information out about that very shortly. So if anybody is looking for information, anybody out there watching in pit lane at the moment, mm -hmm. um, perhaps from interstate or even overseas, and they're interested in finding out more, where do they, where do they go to learn more about uh, both that and auto care and this particular event coming up when it returns here to, to Melbourne in two years' time? Well, certainly uh, there will be information. In fact, we're, we're releasing a floor plan for uh, 2019 and, and expressions of interest on Friday. Uh, so if you go to uh, just aftermarketexpo.com.au, uh, uh, you'll get all the information on the 2019 Aftermarket Expo once we update our website next week, uh, once we, we get this one over. Um, and the, the, the Auto Care Show, uh, we'll, we've got a, a landing page at the moment, we'll be getting more information up there, um, but that's just autocare.org.au. Uh, Okay, well, once again, it's, it's very impressive when you walk around. The thing that we found walking around this year, compared probably with the last year, is just how much more positive people are. Last time around, there was a degree of uncertainty, and a lot of people were saying, you know, we're not sure whether we're going to be, but be here in a couple of years' time. But certainly everybody this year that we've spoken to has said, you know, like, okay, it's not the same, it is hard, but we can see that light at the end of the tunnel now, and there, there is potential to keep going, so uh, that's a that's a great thing to great thing for all of us who are interested in the, the Australian motoring industry. Yeah, look, and I think I, I mentioned that this morning uh, that uh, one of the real uh, spin-off uh, benefits of this show, I think, is that it it gets our industry together. They see uh, what their their colleagues are doing, they see what their competitors are doing, but they they walk around the show, they see the size of the show, and they think, hang on. This doom and gloom, we, we, you know, let's not you know, uh, create this self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, out there it's vibrant, it's happening. Uh, our industry's got a bright, bright future and, um, and, and I think it's really given everyone a, a positive outlook. Everyone's you know, walking with their heads held high and, and uh, got a bit of a skip in their step and, um, and, and that I think is, is one of the real benefits of, uh, of this show. 
Okay, Stuart, thanks a lot for, uh, for inviting us around again. Uh, so it's great to be here and great to have a look around and feel that positivity. And once again, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. No problems, and thank you very much for your support. Okay, thank you. And uh, if, remember, if you'd like to find out more about the Australian Automotive Aftermarket Association, you can go to their website. And also, we'll have uh, more stories from the Expo coming up in the days and weeks to come right here on inpitlane.com. So until we see you next time, thanks for joining us and bye for now.